Hey everyone, this is Stevie, and in today's video, as it says in the title, I couldn't think of anything fancy or clickbaity, which isn't really my style anyway, uh, but what happened? And uh, before we get into that, I want to really, the most important thing, first and foremost, is to thank each and every one of you out there who has sent your thoughts, your prayers, your positive vibes, whatever you believe in or don't believe in, the people that have reached out to me and have uh, expressed well wishes and concern uh, for my health and what's happened because I know the first picture uh, was quite jarring and out of, out of nowhere for a lot of people. And this whole thing really did come out of nowhere, although when we finally got to kind of, not the finish line, but the um, the begin the new beginning, the road to recovery, uh, we weren't exactly sure what was going on either. And, uh, you know, it's just been a really a whirlwind of a six week journey that is just the beginning of what we're up against to recover and then, you know, get back to full strength or hopefully even better. Even if I get back to 50, 60, 70 percent strength in what I was, uh, I'll take it at this point. Um, and I say we and you're going to hear me say we a lot because my wife has been the absolute rock in all this and has been the person that, quite frankly, and I'll talk about it a few times in this video, if it wasn't for my wife, I, I don't think I'd be alive right now. And I'm not, that's not hyperbole. That's not me being over dramatic. This is um, something coming straight from the doctors when we finally did get the diagnosis and then uh, the treatment that we're on right now. So going back to what I said earlier, thank you to each and every one of you out there for thoughts, prayers, positive vibes, well wishes, whatever you could do, the emails, the messages, the DMs. I've tried to get back to each and every one of you. Uh, everybody that's commented on the YouTube shorts where we're documenting the road to re recovery. And even as we were in the hospital trying to figure things out, um, we, we were really eternally grateful for all that stuff. And I haven't had a chance to answer each and every one of the comments here on YouTube, but just an overall, an overarching thank you uh, to each and every one of you out there. So let's start from the beginning. What I'm going to try to do, because I'm OCD, is try to timestamp these. So if you can if you can watch the entire video to get the totality of it, I appreciate it. And if you want to watch certain chapters, that's what they're there for. The timestamps will be in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So six weeks actually to this morning, almost like exact time. Uh, I woke up in the morning, went to the garage gym, worked out, had a really good workout. One of my best ones. I don't know if that was a jinx or not. Had one of my best workouts. Um, came back here. My back, by the way, just give you a little bit of background. No pun intended. The, my background is my back would go out maybe two, three, four times a year as anybody else who's done what I've done for years and decades, or even anybody who gets into their 50s, you tend to have your back just kind of go out. I, I mean, I don't know a guy that I'm friends with, even guys that are younger than me, where their back just doesn't go out once in a while. So I thought initially after my workout, when I came back, my back was a little stiff got on the inversion table, it didn't really seem to help a whole lot, went on the heating pad, did some ice, and just felt tight. And I said, well, this is going to be a few days or maybe one of the longer, you know, uh, stretches of my back being out. So technically, it feels like it's hinged, so I can't bend over, can't do anything like that. So I've been used to that. But what happened a few hours after that, so say I got home around 9, 11 a.m. or 9, 12 uh, I recorded the SmackDown review with Ben Hameen, and then I started to do some editing. I'm sitting right in this chair. That's all a little scared to do the video here. I wanted to kind of go do it outside or at the beach or whatever, uh, but car rides right now are not really, can't really sit down for long stretches of time. So what we were looking at was, okay, it's just your back and that's it. But then after I recorded the SmackDown review and I started doing some editing, I'm in this very chair and... I can't get up. I just can't get up. I don't have the strength to get up. I'm trying to push on the desk. I'm trying to push on the armrest. And I just cannot get up out of the seat. As a matter of fact, I texted my wife, who just texted me right now. I might have to get back to her. I texted her, uh, you know, I think I told her I was having some back issues. Or maybe she just happened to come home. Now, like, just disclaimer about this. My wife has told me about some of these chronological things, too, because it's been... I've been so out of it from pain. So the best I can remember is either I text her or 
she got uh, she got in into the apartment, came in, and literally had to peel me off of this chair, put both her arms underneath me. And at the time, I weighed two fifteen point five, so it's uh, it's not a uh, an easy thing to pick up somebody that's that weighs a lot more and is taller than you, and you're short, and you're trying to get them onto her feet. That is not a um, a fun thing to do. She texted. Uh, she was proud of me for sharing the story because, quite frankly, I, I I was a little uncomfortable in the beginning of doing this, but I felt like that it was definitely something that needed to be shared. Uh, man, if somebody can get inspired or feel like they're not alone, and I will say that a few times during this video and during the entire Road to Recovery playlist series, that um, I really, I really, really wanted to take my ego and my pride and, and quite frankly, my vanity, because a lot of the stuff as we talk about throughout this entire um, stretch up until this point, you know, I've had to put my ego, my pride and my vanity aside uh, because I, I, I am kind of a low point health wise, fitness wise, wellness wise, all that stuff. And, you know, it's a little just the pr pride in me and the, and, and, and the vanity in me gets a little embarrassed that I'm kind of not, um, I'm kind of not up to full strength, but there's a necessary um, story that needs to be told. So getting back to my wife, picking me up out of the chair and I could not stand on my own. And she got me into bed. I was on the heating pad and I couldn't now lay down without excruciating pain out of nowhere, writhing pain, almost like a pain where my body is just contorted in such a way. And we're gonna B-roll some footage and some photos of me from the hospital in the worst pain that I've ever experienced in my life. And once again, when I say these things, it might sound like I'm over-exaggerating or being over-traumatic. I've felt pain. I've had tons of pain, spinal pain too, and all sorts of pain in my life. And this is times a hundred on top of that. So. I got scared. I was like, this is more than my back just going out. But um, it just it was just hard to figure out what was going on. So I was just hoping it was really bad back spasms from my back going out or the back of my mind from from my previous job, my previous career. Maybe my back finally hit the wall and I need surgery. That would have been the safe guess. So we ended up going to a chiropractor. We ended up uh, on a Sunday and God bless him. Sunday afternoon, left his family to come and try to treat me and take x-rays. And, you know, I, we've been going to this chiropractor here in Florida. They're very good people. Everybody, the office manager is amazing. The doctor is amazing. Um, and he put me on traction. But I just knew that there was something wrong. So um, backing up, actually, between uh, the bed and getting to the chiropractor, it was so bad and so instantaneous that my wife had to go out and get me a walker. Not a cane, a walker. She had to get me a walker. And I'm just like, what is going on? And even to get up in a seated position on the bed to try to get up with the walker, I was crying. I was in so much excruciating pain and my legs had already started to fail me. And this is like maybe an hour after she got me into bed. So we went to the chiropractor. He did traction. He didn't manipulate or adjust because he was really scared, which is a good thing because he could have irritated what, what we finally found out was going on. But it was just terrifying. Like I felt like I was about to be paralyzed. Inst I'm talking about finishing a workout around 9 a.m. on a Sunday. By noon, I'm on a walker and can barely use the walker and can't sit down and can't lay down and can't stand. So I was very, very scared. And my wife, who was probably was scared too, was just getting right down to business to try to get me better. So we even, during that week, went to my primary physician who said, basically, he didn't know any different. He's like, oh, based on your history, your back seems to be out, but you might just have to suffer through it. No, no harm, no foul. Uh, he tried to give me some uh, painkillers or some kind of you know muscle relaxers to, to, to kind of pushed down the the spasms, which were continuous, I'm talking about they never let up. I don't like taking that stuff, but we took the recommended dosage. It did absolutely nothing. So we stopped taking that. We tried ibuprofen, tried Tylenol, tried those muscle relaxers. Nothing, nothing worked. It's getting scarier. 
So now we're going, we go to an MRI place, we get the MRI. Mind you, I have to sit in this chair and I'm, I'm crying that I'm in so much pain. When this is a spinal man, pain management clinic, so I'm like, this has to be the place that'll at least tell me what's wrong. Outside of the normal spinal stuff that I've experienced and I've been diagnosed with, nothing. Spine looks fine. And I, I you got to you gotta just think about where, where I'm at at this point. I'm terrified. I'm scared. I can't even stand on the walker. I can't sit. I can't uh, lay down. And at this point, also, I can't sleep. So I've gotten no sleep over the past two to three days at this point. And this went on for another 10 to 11 days. So about two weeks of just 24-7 excruciating pain, muscle spasms. My, my poor wife didn't get any sleep either because I'm just writhing in pain. Uh, nothing worked. Um, sweating, losing weight. I, it's just, it was just, I, I didn't know what was wrong. I mean, I'm going to get a little emotional thinking about it when I think about it and try to re recount these things, but it was terrifying. Uh, and I hope nobody, and this is my my prayers, I was laying in bed for those first few nights and even up until we went to the first hospital. I was like, I was like, God, whatever this is, just do me one favor. Do not let anybody I love or care about or anybody in general ever feel one one hundredth of the pain I'm feeling right now. If this is the cross that you're giving me to bear, okay, I guess I'm not. I don't know what to do. Um, it hurts. I'm crying. I'm scared. But if this is just not going to be any, in anybody else's life who I care and love about, then okay. And that, that was the only solace, at least for a short time. Um, and I did mention the first hospital. We're going to skip over that because there's a lot of different things going on behind the scenes uh, regarding that first medical system or hospital that we went to twice. Uh, it was not a great experience. It was not a good experience. It was worse than a bad experience, but I'll, I'll leave it at that because we're past that and we're concentrating on the positive, which the positive was that we ended up going to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, begging them, my wife being so persistent, begging them to please see me because the initial diagnosis or not diagnosis, the initial appointment was actually three days from this recording, March 22nd. <laughs> And I have to tell you, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how I survived two weeks and even up until now, six weeks later. But those first two weeks, I'm like, I thought it was only like three days, uh, maybe because your mind compartmentalizes that. But we begged, we, we drove up there, we got a hotel room, we begged them to please see me. And when the doctor finally seen me, and I'll put up some uh, B-roll, like I said, when the doctor finally seen me, he was like, we got to get him admitted. We got to get them a minute and figure out what's going on. Because at this point, I'm not in a walker. I'm in a wheelchair and I'm in even more pain in a wheelchair with a pillow behind me, underneath me. The pain is just off the charts. They had asked me like a, a million times, they ask you what's your pain. It was a 20 and that's being conservative. And, and, and I just could not, the amount of pain and writhing and while I couldn't eat, sleep, uh, you know, properly even use the bathroom on my own or anything like that. I had, I needed assistance with everything, getting dressed, all that stuff. It was just incredibly just uh, humbling is the word I'm thinking about in post tense um, in the post of all this. But during it, I was just like, what is going on? So they admitted me. And I have to say night and day difference between the previous medical system and the Mayo Clinic, the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville or all the Mayo Clinics from what I understand is incredible. The culture is incredible. The people really do have great bedside manners. They do care. I didn't feel any kind of phoniness. People were really trying to help and the doctors were incredible with not only just rushing in to cut me and thinking, well, yeah, it's obviously a fusion or it's obviously some other things going on. As a matter of fact, when they looked at my MRI with contrast, they had seen that I have a blood vessel tumor at T12, and they had planned on taking the blood vessel tumor out and cementing that. Um, but it was too high for the pain I was experiencing, which was 
the lower part of my back, like where I'm sitting right now and where you kind of fold, like your, your lumbar region. So lumbar, see my Philly accent once again, even in this video, these videos uh, fails me. So, you know, they're, 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 I give them all the credit in the world because they get a very easily said, let's go in, let's do this, my, you know, laser surgery or microscopic surgery or whatever it's called, very minimally invasive and do that. And as a matter of fact, then keep the, keep, put a pin in this, the doctor had said, I'm really fearful to do this procedure because one of the side effects could be a possible infection. And I don't want to give you an infection. And I thought that was strange. And, you know, is that God working in some strange way through him to be like, no, no, we're not going to do that because we don't want you to get an infection. So, like I said, I put a pin in that and you probably already guessed where we're going. They admitted me, they did the test, um, and then they looked at MRIs from the previous medical system or hospital that we were in, and then the one at the Mayo Clinic that they took with the contrast as well. And they found that an infection was not only on my vertebrae, L4 and L5, but it was also eating away at my spine in those regions and could quite possibly spread. I was like, wow, well, that would explain all the pain. And he said, yes, that absolutely explains the pain. So uh, it was a slow moving infection, a slow growing or, you know, transporting infection and eventually ended up in my spine. And for all I know, on my back, I felt like it was going out. The infection was finally starting to touch my spine and, and you know, debilitate me. There was no other way to put it. I completely debilitated. Um, no numbness in my legs and my arms. That was part of the mystery. So that's why they weren't looking at fusions or the discs and the bones surrounding that infected area were still okay, especially for what I've done in the past. So that's the good news. The bad news is I have an infection. And now what they need to do is a biopsy. And I have to say that um, you want to talk about the actual infection and the pain level of that. Well, uh, for some odd reason, the medicine that was supposed to put me to sleep during the spine biopsy didn't really work, and I was totally awake for it. And if you don't know what a spine biopsy entails, um, from my, what I heard and what they were talking about is basically they shoot lidocaine, lidocaine uh, around the area to numb the surface, and then he literally just takes a big needle and he hammers that needle into your vertebrae, and in my case, into my disc, to take samples, biopsies for the, um, for the infection to see what strain it is. Then he puts a smaller needle in there. But when I tell you the hammering and all that stuff, I felt every bit of it. I felt every bit of it, but I will tell you this, the pain of the biopsy was still just a few levels lower than the actual pain from the infection. Um, Mayo Clinic, like I said, and I'll say it a million times, they are amazing. And if, like I said earlier, my wife saved my life, Mayo Clinic also saved my life by finding it because there's also that chance, and there's no timetable on this, that it's in my vertebrae, it's in my spine, the infection spreads, could go up to my brain, and then I'm not making this video today. So, yeah, that was... Uh, that was sobering to hear, but also thanking God every single second of the day that it was found and that there's going to be a potential treatment. Now, the reason why, in a way, that during this course of this thing, we're putting up the videos of me in the hospital, putting up other videos of me at the low point, not only to hopefully try to help others not feel alone, hopefully inspire others that if I can do it, you can do it, and also at the same time, fitness and health and wellness is not always perfect. And this, these stories and these videos are completely, you know, the opposite of what you consider to be perfect. They're very much a low point. But people, people understandably were like, well, why aren't you just telling us what is going on? It's because at the time they're, they're taking the biopsy, they're doing the cultures, the cultures have to grow. It's a very slow growing culture, kind of like the infection was very slow moving and slow, uh, working into my spine. So that's why, because we didn't have answers. And, and they're still growing the cultures as of now, just to see, but only one strain of the infection, a very common strain of infection, uh, you know, got uh, detected like 48 hours later. So they started the powerful antibiotics and 
the Mayo Clinic, and I'm very thankful because they got a head start on it. They gave me broad spectrum antibiotics through IV, and I started to feel just a little bit better. Instead of screaming when I got out of bed, I was just um, wincing a lot and grunting <laughs> instead of full-blown tears. And then we spent about a week at the Mayo Clinic from a Tuesday to a Tuesday. On the last day, we got this cool little thing, this pick line, which basically goes right near to my heart or one of the valves near my heart in order to deliver the powerful antibiotics at home. We do it every morning, every single morning. My wife administers it very carefully. We make sure it's sterilized. And um, it's just been, like I said, I'm trying to be organized with this video, but it's, it's just thinking back on, on six weeks and what happened. Um, but more importantly, the people in my life, like my wife and like all of you who've reached out, all my family and friends, that uh, that uh, God has answered a lot of questions that I didn't even ask in the first place. God has humbled me in so many ways um, to just show me a lot of things. And well, some of those things I'm aware of, some of those things I'm not. But um, to have my wife and have the people that love and care about me and the true friends more than I realize that I have in, the, in this world and in this life, it's very humbling. But God, is, um, God has provided a lot of perspective over the past six weeks. And like I said, if you don't believe in that, that's, that's great. That's fine. That's, that's your path. I respect that. But I, I also am not going to hide the fact um, that, you know, faith and prayer, um, you know, have been a big part. And, and we always let the world kind of draw us back in or away from God, at least in my life and our life. And that's kind of given me a great deal of, um, like I said, perspective and answers on all that stuff. And you ever hear that saying, I swore I wasn't going to cry, but here I am. It's all good, though. It's for good reasons, because it, uh, it just gave me a lot. It gave me a lot. The, the, the infection and, and the, this, this road to recovery, people might look at it like glass half empty or this has taken so much from me that my business is, is suffering, uh, that all of these worldly things, my business is suffering. I'm not able to make videos. I'm not able to do all these things that I like to do. But the, this all was taken away from me uh, in, in, you know, as I was looking at it. But what was given to me now that I'm kind of looking at it, uh, and let's let's stop it right there for a second. Not every day is perfect. I don't every day I'm not thanking God and having the perspective. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting scared. I have a great deal of fear. Uh, how can this happen again? How can I prevent it from happening again? All these different things, but um, it's just something that you have to look at. And, and that's where early on, sorry about that, the battery died and uh, it gave me a little chance to kind of compose myself a little bit. But um, like I said, I've been provided a lot of answers and there's things in life too that you can either try to make the most out of it. You can try to turn a negative into a positive. You can use every cliche phrase in the book that you want. Um, but early on when we were in the hospital, my wife and I had that talk. And even when I was laying in the bed for the first two weeks, that if we can get to, to a place where at least we're on the road to getting better, I want to use this experience to, to help others in some way. I don't know how that is. Maybe just by document. It's just like I said before, by making people feel like, okay, well, I don't have to be so scared. He was scared or it's okay to be scared or if he can do it, I can do it. And trust me, when I say that and people look at me and say, well, you're 
you know, some kind of machine or maniac when it comes to working out or all these other things, these videos will hopefully serve the purpose that I'm hoping to put out there to help and inspire other people and not make them feel so alone and not make them feel like it's absolutely hopeless. Because for those first two weeks, it felt pretty damn hopeless at times because we weren't getting any answers and we weren't able to, it wasn't getting better, it was getting worse. So those are lessons I learned. And like I said before, whether you believe or you don't believe, that's your choice. But like, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to not be so withdrawn with that anymore. I'm not going to beat anybody over the head with it. I say God bless each and every one of you at the end of every video. And that gets me in trouble with YouTube, by the way, but I don't care. I'll lean in, into that even more. But it, it's just, there's a message in this. There's a lesson to be learned. And I'm learning a lot of lessons every day. Uh, I'm just learning to appreciate a lot more. And nothing makes you appreciate uh, just standing, uh, you know, and even though I've moved on and I'm so happy to move on from the walker to the cane for the most part, I'm never going to take it for granted. I'm never going to take life, which life is precious and quality of life is even more precious and fragile at times. You can be, you can have, be alive, but not living your life to so many levels, whether it be physically mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of the above. It's just a, an incredible lesson that I'm learning right now. And like I I've said in the beginning, I might have said it if I haven't. I apologize if I'm jumping around because I'm not going to script this. I'm not going to categorize this in any way. Like there will be timestamps. I'll do my best with that. But I just wanted to let you know that it's just, it's just been, I think overall, I'm, I'm really thankful for the experience sounds so crazy to say, isn't it? I'm so thankful and grateful um, for the experience and what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I went through, because I'm glad it's in the past. Don't get me wrong. The, the part of me is like, whenever I feel like 1% of that pain of what I felt during those weeks before we started getting treatment, whew, man, it's just overwhelming, the, the, you know? It's, it's terror. I said terrifying a few times. Terrifying to think that I don't ever want to feel that pain again. I don't ever want to feel, and I don't ever want any of you to feel that pain. So, so moving forward, this is what, um, what we have going on. Uh, obviously, the road to recovery. Um, as far as the podcasting, we have the big fitness show, myself and Mike Barron's, and also I still do the podcast. Uh, with Vince Russo and Ben Hameen, the two wrestling shows. Not right now, uh, because quite frankly, even in between these takes or when the battery died, I had to get up and walk around because it hurts to sit too long. It hurts to lay down. It hurts to stand. We're, we're still in that phase where nothing is comfortable. But I will take uh, discomfort. I will take soreness. I will take stiffness over the pain that I had. It's definitely getting better, but like uh, I do have a, a long road ahead of me. We, we, my wife and my, myself, I should say we, I'm sorry, because she's every bit the one. And let's, let's talk about that um, before I go. Because people, like I said, think I'm some kind of machine or I got this, this fighting spirit within me where I'll just recover very easily and I can push through and I just got the mental... Uh, discipline, the willpower to do that. Yes, in the past, when it came to wrestling injuries and other things, I knew what I had to do. I knew what the injury was, and I worked as hard as I could to get back in the ring and start wrestling again. This one was much different. This, this was different than an injury, not even just by the diagnosis of being an infection as opposed to the um, injury. Uh, you know, the injury category. This one scared me and I had a lot of fear and I was not motivated to do anything. I was afraid to even walk around in the walker. I was afraid to move to the cane. I was afraid to stand up on my own. I was afraid to do everything. As a matter of fact, I found myself, <laughs> you know, talk about like hitting the low point. I found myself saying I can't way more than even saying I'll try. Just I can't. And I would just kind of wave my wife away. And to her credit, 
she's the reason why I'm getting better. She's the reason why I was those videos of me in the walker walking around of me on the sand dune stepper of me now on the cane of me getting outside. She's been the motivator. She's been the one that's been pushing me. And, and it, it, I'm sure it's tough to see somebody you love in pain because I am in pain when I do a lot of these movements. I feel it. Nothing close from before, but it's still there. And she will just push me forward. She's been my 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 personal trainer. Yeah, everybody talks about how I my my programs or these videos have helped them and I've helped them train better and do all this stuff. That's all thrown out the window. I became the client. I became the audience for my wife to motivate me. And she's been an incredible motivator. She's been the the the, the best thing that's ever happened to me, obviously. But but to motivate me and push me and even though it looks like it's hurting someone she loves, she knows it's for the overall good of the, the overall recovery. So that was, you know, it needs to be said. People give me credit in the comments and on the Instagram reels. It's all her. 99.9% .9 her. And with me kind of, at the, now I'm a little better. But I, if she didn't push me in the beginning, I wouldn't have any progress. I've just been laying in bed or sitting on the couch, still in pain, not getting up, walking around, not rehabbing where I'm at right now. So, um, and then while this is in, I'm not able to work out. I haven't, this is the longest stretch I haven't worked out in a long time. Uh, but that, talking about moving forward, once again, uh, moving forward, you're going to see how I'm rehabbing this every step of the way. I'm going to try to document as much as I can. And that includes, I need to actually reset my entire fitness journey and actually add the health, wellness, nutrition to it, because I can look healthy on the outside. I can look, you know, lean or muscular or strong or whatever. But now since this infection and what happened, I have to make sure my immune system is built up. I got to make sure that my internals are healthy. I have my blood work. There's a whole new element that just outside of cardio and lifting weights. Now, of course, I'm going to have to start over. I'm going to do body weight stuff. I'm going to go back to the resistance bands. I've always been a resistance band guy anyway. I'm going to have to be doing a lot more yoga. I'm going to be careful. I'll do everything to lengthen my spine and now overcome the arthritis that has set in from past injuries. So we're not only recovering from this very serious, almost deadly infection. But now I need to rehab every injury from the past that I've ever had because the arthritis in my knees, my hips, my neck, uh, my elbows, my everything, which is great because it'll teach me now to move more uh, efficient and have more functional strength and be able to, this could be the biggest blessing in the skies because now I'm forced to train the right way. I'm forced to, you know, let's not forget isometrics. I'm talking about body weight, isometrics, bands. I, I may never touch a, a, a free barbell again. It might be all cable work. It might be Smith machine work, swimming, water weights. I, that's definitely going to be something in the first stage of this, probably the body weight, the water weights, the isometrics will probably be the three things before we even move to resistance bands. But like I said, it's going to be documented every step of the way on the or in the road to recovery playlist so if you please join me please thank you for subscribing click the bell get notified we have a lot of different people that have subscribed since this thing has uh started uh but please if you if you have any kind of you know uh, people in your life or anybody that can benefit from this or need to know that they're not alone in this journey please share videos like this and like I said this was not none of my videos are really scripted but I usually have a, a blueprint of what I'm going to say and what we're going to do in the review videos but this is a little bit different and this is really just something as I'm just kind of thinking of things as we go through so like I said I'll try to time stamp them as best as I can but I do appreciate you taking all this time um, to watch this video and also follow me from the beginning uh, before we recovered from the hospital and also now on the road to recovery. And I just pray uh, that I don't let anybody down, that I do my best to, to get back to where I can. And also now having new perspective on 
you know, this, this thing here, the lower back thing, when someone talks about how much back pain they're in and this and that and everything, I have a whole new level of understanding perspective and empathy. So it's going to allow me to be, to be a better person as far as someone in the health, fitness, wellness space. And also when I design programs and design things that I keep putting people in mind that may have trouble with certain things. So as far as modifications, now I can have a whole new world of other modifications because I'm living them right now, living all the modifications that I need to do. So that's what I'm hoping to accomplish. That's what I'm going to try my best to accomplish here with the content and with Stevie Richards Fitness as a whole moving forward. Um, once again, thank you to everybody out there who has um, been pulling for me and been wishing me well and checking on me and uh, sending prayers. And like I said, most of all, my wife, who's been the biggest uh, influence and, and just an incredible just um, foundation and rock for everything uh, moving forward. She was before all this, but it's just uh, solidified that more and more every day. So that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. Please subscribe, click the bell to get notified. Um, SteveRichardsFitness.com. As soon as I'm able to sit here for a longer amount of time, we're going to redesign that. Big Fitness Show will be coming back soon, as well as honoring all my other obligations for content creation. So uh, moving forward, we still have a mix of the reviews from the Force USA headquarters. Please check those out. And obviously from those videos, we have affiliate links and codes. And if you use those, you help support the content here on the channel. Even if you just bookmark the Amazon affiliate link and shop like you normally do, every bit of that will help us here to provide hopefully the best content possible. So that's about it. Thank you guys so much. Most importantly, God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day.